The hunt for the next professional MasterChef champion is on. And these six chefs all believe they have what it takes to win the title. Today, they face two challenges set by Judge Greg Wallace and two of Britain's best chefs, Monica Galletti and Michelin-starred Marcus Waring. I'm very competitive. I haven't come here to make up the numbers. I've definitely come here to win. I'll bring my A game, and then we'll see who comes out on top at the end. I'm absolutely thrilled to be here. I'm just going to do what I love. We've met some amazing winners in the past, and I can't wait to discover the next one. The pressure in this kitchen is going to be immense. Skills test time, and Marcus has got a beautiful John Dory on his bench. Well, the challenge is going to be to portion and cook a John Dory, serve it with polenta, and then I'd just like him to make a simple pesto. John Dory mm. is my favourite, favourite fish. How long are you going to give him? I'm going to give our chefs 15 minutes. Go on, chef. Crack on. First thing we'll do is going to start off with our fish. I would love to see a chef who knows how to fill it any flat fish or any round fish. I think it's a fundamental, very important part of our training. The chefs do have to be careful uh, because it does have a ridge bone down the middle and if they're not careful, you could go straight across and then cut through the lovely fillets. I'm going to take the skin off. If they want to score the skin and cook it as a whole, that's entirely up to them. This is going to be the last thing that I cook. Before then, I'm going to make my polenta. So that's our milk in the pan, our chicken stock, Put a little bit of saffron into there. Polenta has its own natural yellow colour, but I think a little saffron just helps to bring out the colour, make it a little bit stronger, a bit more vibrant. Polenta you can pour or you can slice. I mean, yeah. it can be any texture, can't it? Just because it's a wet or soft polenta, you still have to make sure it's cooked, otherwise those granules mm. uh, can still be quite bitty if they're not cooked through. It also needs to bear in mind that we're also going to be adding some parmesan, so it's also quite salty. Chopped tarragon. Lovely. OK, so now we're going to make our pesto. So we've got a little machine here. Just pack our basil in. Good olive oil. Some pine nuts and some grated cheese. Great to see our chefs make a great pesto here. We've got great ingredients, something that is quite common in, in, in all kinds of kitchens. So now you're just looking for that beautiful, vibrant green colour. I think basil may be my second favourite colour. It's the butter that's going to add an amazing amount of flavour because it's just that nut brown butter that we look for in our cookery. Turn that fish over yeah. and we just baste away. Yeah, it's wonderful. It's a wonderful sight. Just a little bit of the polenta. That's just lovely. There we have it, guys. Pan fried John Dory, polenta, and pesto. Lovely. Very, very lovely. It's got Greg Wallace written all over it. <laughs> Extraordinary. Mm. That polenta is wild. Aniseed tarragon, a little bit of salt from Parmesan, and then, of course, the bottom base of saffron. That is wild. Good polenta cookery, good fish cookery, and a lovely, vibrant flavour of the pesto. Lovely green. It's no. about great techniques, great cookery, and that's what we want to see on the plate. First up is Kamal, who currently works in a five-star London hotel. So I've been a chef for 10 years now. My current position as a sous chef so is running all aspects of the kitchen. Growing up, I was about six. That's why I first got my passion and my love for cooking. My mum, she got me this chef jacket that was like 10 sizes too big, but I loved it. 
I've worked in some very high pressure kitchens, so I'm very good at staying calm. So hopefully I can carry that over to the competition. Kamal, I would like you to fillet and prepare the John Dory. OK. I would like you to cook and serve it with polenta mm -hmm. and a basil dressing. And a basil dressing. OK. okay. You've got 15 minutes. Off you go. Thank you. Kamal, have you done much work with fish at all? I've done a, a few bits and pieces with fish. Yeah, the first time with John Dory, though, I have okay. to say. You're halfway. Well, you've got seven minutes left. OK. What's the dream? One day to hopefully be in the, uh, the position of you guys, to be honest. What, you mean I'm losing my job here? Get a few more years under my belt, but maybe one day. <laughs> I think you're doing well. He's got a beard, he's got a bald head. <laughs> <laughs> Get yourself a pair of glasses, mate. You're on your way. What are you doing in that pack? Basically, I just want to make a bit of a sauce to go on top. Listen, you've got two minutes. Two minutes? No you've problem. You've got to start thinking about plating it up. No problem. Two minutes is going to come right now. Done? OK. Yes, done. Finished. Thank you. I thought that was a very cool, calm, together skills test. Thank you. The filleting of the fish, you don't cut that John Dory through the middle. You take yeah. the whole fillet off. Mm -hmm. Nice looking plate. It's lovely. I think that's very good. I'm not even going to go and try and pick little holes of this, 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 this. I think it's an excellent piece of work. Thank you. Yeah, that's lovely. That's fine. That's a really well-cooked piece of fish and lovely flavours of basil and saffron in a creamy polenta. Well done. Thank you. I like the way you worked. You kept it nice and tidy. Uh, you have a great attitude about you as well. And I think it's a great way to walk into this kitchen and start. See you soon. What a fabulous start. This is pretty good. If you don't mind, I'm going to stare at your face for a while because I probably won't see it smile again for another four <laughs> days. <laughs> That's probably <laughs> true. I'm very happy, but I don't want to let the comments go to my head. I just want to stay focused, and then if I get past the next round, then I'll be a bit more happy jumping on the, the sofas. <laughs> next is 23-year-old Zoe, a development chef from Harrow. West London. I look at new exciting ingredients, whatever's on the restaurant market, and then create something really new and exciting. What I love about being a development chef is that you can walk in a supermarket and look at a product that you've made and think, well, instead of making dinner for a few hundred people tonight, I might have made dinner for thousands. Slightly petrified about the skills test, but fingers crossed I'll know what they put on the table in front of me. Right, Zoe, fill it, a whole John Dory, cook one portion, serve with polenta and a basil dressing. 15 minutes, off you go. So, do you enjoy working with fish? It's not one of my favourite ingredients. Uh, I'm definitely a pastry chef at heart. You've had six minutes, OK? You OK, Zoe? Yeah. A bit trembly hand? Slightly trembly hand. It's slightly nerve-wracking, but it's all good.
You've got five minutes. Zoe, mm -hmm. you've got a minute. Okay. Okay? Yeah. All done? All done. I think it was quite obvious to see that you found it quite hard to deal with the John Dory. Yes. When it came to filleting, going from the belly side and working your way through is yeah. the opposite. You need to go from the, yeah. the spine, the back. I think you did very well. However, you were so rushed at the end. This isn't the most delicate or pretty of plates. It's kind of chucked on. Zoe, it may not have looked good, but it certainly tastes good. The fish is spot on. You've obviously made polenta before. Everything I put into mine, you've pretty much got in there. And your seasoning is bang on. Thank you very much. Zoe, I like your attention to the tasting and the cooking of your food here. It shows a lot of care and love in your cooking. If you continue to do that, we'll always get good tasting plates of food from you. Thank you. You did very, very well. I think that's a good tasting dish. Thanks very much. I saw the fish and I just knew I was, I was petrified and my legs kind of went to jelly a little bit, but I'm really, really happy with the comments that I received. So yeah, I'm really happy with those, yeah. Last to take on Marcus's test is Wayne head chef at a restaurant and hotel in Cheltenham. I've been a head chef for 10 years now. I've been cooking for 20 years. I'm quite relaxed in the kitchen, which helps, you know, when you're not shouting and bawling at your staff, you get the best from them. I don't like to play about with the food too much. I've got quite classical training. Don't really use too many modern techniques, but I like to reimagine the dishes a little and just bring it to life on the plate. I look up to Marcus Waring like there's no tomorrow. To have your food critiqued by him would be something else. Monica Galletti is fearsome. There's nothing that gets past her, so that's quite scary. Wayne, I would like you to fillet the whole John Dory and cook a portion served with polenta and a basil dressing. How would you like the polenta? Creamed? To you. OK. Down to you. 15 minutes, Wayne. Sure. Off you go. Thank you. Wayne, are you preparing and cooking lots of fish in your restaurant? I've got three fish dishes on the menu currently, so... You're halfway, Wayne. Thank you. What made you become a chef? Uh, my grandparents. <laughs> Basically, uh, I originally wanted to be a journalist, but their thoughts on it was people always need to eat, so go and be a chef. <laughs> Wayne, where are we at now? The polenta and the basil dressing is ready, so I'm just waiting for that to cook. Polenta's ready? I think so. Well done. You had two minutes to go. Cool. Thank you. The preparation of your fish, you started off well until you got to the, the other side of the fish. The tricky side. Yeah, the way you're cutting into the fish. Yeah. Out of practice, I think, we'll say. The plate looks really nice, the way you presented it. Pesto, you can see the errors there. You need mm. to break those pine nuts down. Yeah.
that polenta doesn't taste great because it's cooked in just stock. And what you need is to get the milk jug in and get lumps of butter in. The pesto hasn't got anywhere near enough basil. However, I don't think this makes you a bad cook. I think this makes this a nervy start. The fish cooker is OK. Uh, I think you salvaged it by putting some butter in the pan. The plate of food's good. I just think there's few schoolboy errors there that when you leave this kitchen, you'll know. Already. You already know. <laughs> Massively kicking myself over the schoolboy errors. The polenta wasn't good and the pesto wasn't the best. It was just being too safe. But now, hopefully, the next one will be uh, a lot better. Marcus, we've seen the chefs attempt yours. Mm -hmm. Monica, this is your skills test. What are you going to set the chefs? I would like the chefs to make us a tartar of lamb and serve it with a coffee egg yolk. Wow, I've never had a lamb tartare ever. Pretty much everything out there can be tartare as long as it's a very good quality of meat or fish. How long are you going to give them? Our chefs have 15 minutes. The first thing I'm going to do is make my mayonnaise, which is the base of the sauce of the tartare. I'm adding a bit of Dijon mustard into mine. We would expect any chef to make a mayonnaise, right? Yep. Now I'm going to move on to the butchery of the lamb. So I've removed the loin from the lamb rack. If you've got a chef that has never seen a rack of lamb before, then that chef is going to have a massive problem with this challenge. As you can see, there's still a lot of, of sinew that runs through it. So we want to remove uh, as much of that as possible, trim it down. You can see I'm not hacking the meat here because you want to keep some of the texture. I don't want to mince it. If I was going to mince it, I might as well put it in a blender. So what I want to do now is to prepare the rest of the garnish. So I've got some gherkins. Everything about a tartare comes down to the techniques of the knife and how fine they get everything. Not one thing should stick out. Everything should come together. So I'm going to use some of the shallot, a bit of caper as well, and I'm also going to add flat parsley. I'm asking them to confit the egg yolk, just separating as much of the egg white out of the yolk before I confit it. The egg yolk is, is very fragile. They've got to keep an eye on the temperature. It cooks very quickly. So I'm going back and forth, checking on it. For me, I know it's about a minute away. Right, so I'm ready to assemble and serve the tartare. We don't need a lot of this. Brandy. Tabasco and a couple of drops of Worcestershire. And a touch of ketchup. Very gently mix that together. That's my tartare mix, and I'm ready to plate the dish. So that's just a really simple little herb salad that I'm going to serve on the side. And there you have it, lamb tartare with a confit egg yolk. Well, I've never seen a lamb tartare before but it looks very similar to a beef one. <laughs> the lamb is just incredibly tender. The fine cut garnishes that go through it are crucial to this dish succeeding. It's an intriguing dish and it's gonna, it's gonna challenge our chefs. This is a huge test on their palate as well. A tartare is a simple thing. Anyone can put it together, but it's in the eating that really shows the quality of the chef. Get them in, get them in. I'm really interested to see what they make of this. First to face Monica's test is 24-year-old Theodore, a chef de partie and college student from Stirling. I've been a chef for seven years now. I'm going back to college to get my qualifications to go offshore to work on the oil rigs. 
I look forward to going offshore and saving up to have my own restaurant one day. My grandmother, she's a Kenyan Indian. She had a very different cuisine, a lot of spices and herbs. So I was always on her shoulders and she used to get me to make chapatis. Definitely a good learning experience and that's where I got my love for food. I'm just gonna give it my all and I'm just gonna be concentrating on the food so much that my nerves won't be there, <laughs> hopefully. <laughs>90 seconds left. You need to get this on a plate, please. Yeah. All done? Yeah. Theodore, this piece of meat is very expensive because in a tartar we want the prime cut for that. Now what you've done is just destroy it when all you had to do was just follow the natural line of the bone, remove the meat out and then clean that lovely fillet. Okay. You have got a plate up. I like the look of the tartar. I would wonder if this came out to me what that sauce was. I, I wouldn't ever imagine that was a mayonnaise. I would guess that was a mustard dressing. Not quite oozing. What I'm getting is a mouthful of capers, lots of gherkin as well. The mayonnaise, you only try to emulsify yolks and vegetable oil. You didn't use any mustard in there, which is needed to hold a mayonnaise together. The elements of the tartare are there, but the method is completely wrong. I can only taste these capers and gherkins, vinegar and some shallots. I can't taste the lamb at all. And the confit egg on the top, unfortunately, is overcooked. Theodore, this wasn't a great round for you. I'd like to think you are going to come out of that door in the next round and cook up a storm. I'll give it my best. I definitely felt I could have done better. I should have thought about what I was doing and um, how I was doing it, how I was going to play it up. So I definitely want to show them in the next round that I can cook. Next up is senior sous chef Andy, who works for a three rosette restaurant in Leamington Spa. He's been in the industry for 25 years. I've done large cover restaurant, I've done contract catering, and this is my first real stint at fine dining. I started doing competitions a few years back and managed to get into Chef of the Year back in 1990. A young man called Gordon Ramsay won the final and I got through the semi-finals. It's push yourself, it's a project outside your comfort zone, you meet new people and it's just a fantastic thing to do. Andy, today I would like you to make us a lamb tartar and serve it with a comfy egg yolk. Oh, lovely. Lovely, lovely. Happy yep. with that? I think so, yeah. 15 minutes, Andy. Yep, OK. Lamb tartare and a confit yolk. Mm. 
So, tell me about your tata. How are you going to put this together? Um, I'm just, I'm obviously very nervous stood here, so I'm just going to go on what I know to the meat and then do some spices and seasonings. I haven't done a confidant yolk before, not without a water bath, so I'm just going to maybe just put the yolk in to low oil and hopefully get it out on top, hopefully. OK. So, Sounds like a good plan. You're halfway. So seven minutes left. Yeah. You've got just four minutes. Yeah. Working? Yeah, that's nice. Egg. Whee. You all done, Chef? Yep. I like your attempt at the tartare today. You managed to get that fillet off and trim the sinew. I really like your attitude, Andy. Andy, great approach to the challenge. You're very competent, you're looking, you're seasoning, you're tasting. You're doing everything that we're looking for. I hope it tastes as good as it looks. Look at that. Ooze. I can taste the lamb, but there's just a lot of gherkin in there. But I think you've done a great attempt, and that yolk is spot on. I like the tartare. The criticism I have is I think you've just mushed the lamb up a little bit too much. You need it to be just a little bit more broken. But that's just a fine, fine detail. The egg yolk oozing all over it, I just think, gives it real body. I think it's a marvellous job, Andy, and a really cracking good start to the competition. Brilliant. Brilliant. Well done, chef. To have the judges watch me cook, it's great. The next round coming up, and now I've seen the kitchen, <laughs> and I've had a little look around, I'm ready to go, ready to cook. Last to face Monica's test is Andrew. Sue's chef at a small village restaurant just outside Leicester. Leaving school at 16, I had to decide what I wanted to do, so I flipped a coin. Landed on heads, became a chef instead of uh, a physiotherapist, which is a little bit weird to think of. Being a chef is very hard. Hours are long, but at the end of the day, it's you on a plate. Why did I apply for Master Chef? My mum. I went home on Mother's Day and she gave me a form to fill in online. I was like, go on, do it. So I did, and here I am now. Andrew, I would like you to make for us a lamb tartare and uh, serve it with a confit egg yolk. Okay. 15 minutes, off you go. Okay. So, Andrew, where have you been training? I started work in Surrey, and then I moved back to Bedfordshire and then Leicestershire way. Did you work under John Campbell? I did work under John Campbell, yes. I had one of my weddings there. I did your wedding for you. Did you, Andrew? Yes, I did. You had the fish and chips. Yeah, that's brilliant. Yeah. I love getting married. You are halfway. You've got seven minutes left. Yes. Five minutes, Andrew. Yes. You done? 
Yes. You had a minute and a half left. You seem very tense, and I was actually quite worried that you weren't breathing at the one point, <laughs> you know. Um, in saying that, the butchery, you took your time and didn't damage the lamb too much. Good effort. I'd be satisfied if that came up to me. However, I'd get rid of the red spider's legs that are scattered across your egg. Could have a bit more ooze on there, Chef, couldn't we? Yeah. Could have a little bit less cooking. I don't think it's a bad attempt at tartar. I think you needed to just taste it a bit more. There is a touch too much mustard. Yeah. And the gherkins for me could have been chopped just a little bit smaller so you're not crunching through big bits of the gherkin. I think that's not half bad at all. I really like it. I like the fact I can taste the lamb, which is great, and I can taste a beautiful little bit of parsley. You're a competent chef, without a doubt. I think that shows in your skill. The criticism is the egg because it's just overcooked underneath. Yeah. But from a tartar point of view, I really like it. I think it's a very, very good effort. Thank you. You've had a good start to the competition. How do you feel now? Are you breathing? I'm breathing. <laughs> good lad. I like it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like We've had a really good skills test, though. Nerve-wracking. I'm happy it's over and I can, I can relax. I know what I'm doing next, so it's a little bit more straightforward. That was a great skills test. In fact, I'd go so far as to say that may be the best skills test we've ever had. I think we only had one person mess up, and that was poor young Theodore. Theodore did make a bit of a mess of his butchery of his lamb, but he did put a plate of food in front of us. He did put a tartar with an egg on top. So, in theory, I think we had six great challenges today. I'm very happy of the quality of the chefs we've seen so far, and I can't wait for the signature round. I've got high hopes from these chefs. We should get royally fed. I'm going to get a bigger jacket. <laughs>
You've got a lot of ingredients here. Uh, I hope you're going to make it in 90 minutes. Come on. Oh, definitely, definitely. I love the cooking of the sea bass. The pan fried. He's got to make sure that he gets a lovely crisp skin. The watercress and spinach velouté sounds great. As long as the watercress is nice and smooth. Kamel has admitted that he's only tested half of his dish. I just hope the other half is going to make it on the plate. Chefs, you've had 20 minutes already. 20 minutes gone. I'm feeling really confident. I can't wait to show the judges a bit more of my skill and passion. So there's going to be no holding back. It's going to be full on. Andy, tell me about your signature dish, please. I'm doing pork freeways, and that'll be sat on some onion jam, some asparagus peas, broad beans, spring onions, rolls. And a little potato cake. Hopefully, yes. Well, how much do you love cooking fine food? Love it. Love it. It's my, it's my every day. It's my passion. It's what I do. It just excites me. just really excites me. Big fan of pork. Cooking it three ways is always going to be a risk of getting all three elements right. The pork cheek, you want it just to flake away. The pork loin can come out dry sometimes. And he's got black pudding that he's turning into a bonbon. We've seen what the pressure in this environment can do to chefs. I hope that Andy can deliver this dish within the 90 minutes allotted to him today. You guys are halfway. 45 minutes left to create a culinary masterpiece. I'm very competitive, like, not just chef in everything, sports, you name it. Plan now is just to go for perfection, really. Andrew, what are you making for us? I'm making a take on a Black Forest Gatto. So I'm doing a Jacon sponge. Uh, chocolate mousse, but I'm making it into a sphere and then make it into a, like a cherry. Right. So you're actually getting different elements of cherry and chocolate and sponge on there. Can you do all that? Hopefully. Andrew, how long have you been on pastry? I've done about five years, yeah, on or off. I'm going out, but I'm not going fully out, so there's always going to be more to show. Wow, that's brave. That's, that's cooking fighting talk. Yeah. <laughs> I can't wait to see how it's going to look, and I hope he manages to deliver those memories that you have when you eat a Black Forest Gatto. It's sponge, it's cream, it's cherries, it's kirsch. It's just oozing luxury. I'm hoping that they're going to enjoy my dish. I can't do um, any worse than I did in the last round. I want it more than anything. I didn't come down here for nothing, so... <laughs> Theodore, what are you making? Pan-fried cod with wild leek seeds, lemon mussels, saffron potatoes. I'm going to be serving that with some wildflowers. Do you feel, after the first round, you have a point to prove? Yes, definitely, definitely. Placing the quarterfinal would mean absolutely everything to me, and I've been waiting for this day for a long time, so... <laughs> well, you're here now. Yep. Oh, yeah. Best of luck, yeah. Chef. Thank you, Chef. Good luck. Thank you. Theodore's going to pan fry a fillet of cod. This has got to be wonderful and crispy, yet still moist. And he's got some mussels. He's panned them with a lemon breadcrumb. I like the sound of that. Brave not serving the sauce, but I hope parsnip puree can carry this dish through. Well, I definitely don't think I'm playing safe. I don't think you enter a competition like this to do so. It's a really short amount of time, so, uh, yeah, fingers crossed. Zoe, what are you making for us? I'm going to do sort of tastes of carrot cake with my spin on it, really. And how are you doing that? I like a lot of different Asian influences. I've decided to use a, a miso caramel instead of a salted one. Then I have added black and white sesame seeds into my walnut brittle with a carrot puree with zested oranges. Have you got time to do all these things? I think so, yeah. This is my strongest point. Uh, pastry is my love and I love making it complicated. Good on you, Zoe. You. This is your strength. Let's hope we see you in the quarterfinal. Thanks very much. Good luck. Thank you. Zoe is going to elevate this dish to another level, so that excites me. I can't wait to see how she's going to achieve that. 
puree, the caramel, the powder and the carrot twill. These are all nice things as long as they all work in harmony together. Ten minutes left. Ten minutes left. Guys, you have four minutes. That's all you have, just four minutes. That's it. Stop. Stop. Feel. Wayne, up come, please. First up is Wayne. He's prepared a pan-fried duck breast, served with almond quinoa, sweet potato puree, charred sprouting broccoli, pickled peach, and a sumac twill, accompanied by a duck shoe. Really good looking plate of food, Wayne. I like the presentation. The cooking of the duck is spot on for me. The sweet potato is not too sweet. I like what you've done with the peach being roasted and pickled. For me, this dish was all about that balance of savory and sweet, and you achieved that. Really nice duck, and I love it with the peach. I really like your duck sauce as well. It's really sticky, and it's got bags of flavour. I'm not a fan of the quinoa. It's really dry. Love the peach. It refreshes the palate while you're eating this beautiful duck dish. Very good dish. I could just do with a little less quinoa, that's all. OK, thank you. To have a two Michelin star chef say that he, he liked your plate of food, it's overwhelming, really. I'm over the moon. <laughs> Kamal's dish is pan-fried sea bass, langoustine and squid in crumb, served with girole mushrooms, celeriac puree, asparagus, Radish and samphire, finished with a watercress velouté. I love the cooking of your sea bass. That's perfect for me. And I really enjoy the buttery longer sea. I think that's fantastic. However, I find the use of asparagus a little too strong. And that sauce does nothing for me in, in terms of colour. I think it's maybe a little bit too lurid. Mm -hmm. I do love this uh, squid ink crumb. It's got hints of the parmesan coming through it, which I find goes quite nice with the creaminess of the velouté. Some of the veg I'm finding quite underwhelming and under-seasoned, but then I get a very salty uh, mushroom. I think overall there are bits of this dish which I like, but I'm not getting the harmony and the balance of the seasoning throughout the dish. Yeah. Come on, I like your presentation. Maybe just one piece of fish too much, that was all. Yeah. yeah. I really like the cookery of, of your fish. I also like the longestine, and I actually like your sauce. Good dish, come on, very good dish. Thank you. Mixed emotions about it. I'm happy to an extent that Marcus could see my vision with the dish, but I was still a bit disappointed with the small errors that I did make. Andy's cooked pork three ways. A pork fillet wrapped in pancetta, braised pig cheek on an onion marmalade, and a black pudding bonbon topped with a potato cake. Served with girole, peas, broad beans, asparagus, and finished with a pork choux. 
It's a very well presented plate of food, very, very well put together. I love that black pudding earthiness with a, a crunchy crust on it. I absolutely love the cheek on top of that sweet, tangy marmalade. When I did get a little bit of sticky sauce, it put the whole thing up another step. I wish I had more of that. The way the pork fillet has been cooked, that bacon around it, it's a winner for me. If I have to find a fault, I would say sauce is what we need on this place. The vegetables are, are very well prepared and beautifully cooked. What this dish is crying for is that sauce that should just marry the whole thing together. A bit let down slightly by the lack of sauce. I know for next time. I think I've seen enough for them to understand where I'm coming from, my ethic, so it should be OK. Zoe has made carrot cake spiced with cardamom, accompanied by miso caramel, orange liqueur infused cream cheese, carrot powder, a walnut and sesame seed brittle, carrot puree, and a light coffee syrup. I love the presentation. I'd be very, very happy to eat that. I'm very happy to eat it in a restaurant. I've had a lot of cakes in this competition. I haven't quite had one as good as this, though. Hey. Thank you very much. There's lemon on the plate, there's carrot on the plate, you know, the little sweet biscuits you've got there. And, of course, then you've got all the spices of the carrot cake as well. So you've got all these fabulous little delicate things going on. I think, I think that says it all. <laughs> yes. We did it. <laughs> I get carrot in there that almost tastes like apple. I got a carroty flavoured cream. I love the textures, I love the flavours. I, I love your pleasantly warped cake mind. Uh, you've got some great ideas in here. The cake is wonderful and moist. Then that caramel with the miso on top was ingenious. I love that and I wish you had more on the plate. I just think you really know your craft and it's just been a really smartly put together dessert. Thank you very much. Thanks very much for those comments. I really appreciate it. <laughs> On top of the world, to get comments like that was beyond a dream. So, yeah, absolutely blown away. Really am. Theodore's dish is pan-fried cod, pan lemon salt mussels, and saffron potatoes, with a parsnip puree, wild leek seeds, and wild garlic flowers. I think your fish is cooked really, really well. I love those mussels that you've coated in lemon salt, which is something I've never seen before. However, your saffron potatoes aren't cooked enough. They're hard. Your fish, for me, is perfectly cooked. It's well seasoned. Really happy to eat a piece of fish cooked like that. The puree is nice and smooth. Unfortunately, the potatoes are too hard. They're not cooked enough. There's some nice things in here, but it's not a dish that's really wowing me at the moment. The parsnip puree is velvety and sweet, but it doesn't work with saffron potatoes. So I think with some vegetables, less potato, you might have something, but it's just a little bit... For me, it's a pitcher, it's not a dish. Yep. Unfortunately, I undercooked my potatoes, which I'm disappointed about, but I'm happy with the judges' comments, and I'm definitely going to take them on board um, for future reference.
Andrew is serving his take on a black forest gateau. A dark chocolate mousse sphere with a cherry compote center. Accompanied by a chacon sponge, kirsch gel, mini meringues, tempered chocolate and cherries, all sat on a chocolate crumb. Andrea, your presentation is fabulous. Um, a beautiful choice of plate. The colors really complement each other. That is an absolute stunning piece of work, Andrew. That sphere that's almost crunchy on the outside with that beautiful, smooth, not too sweet chocolate and then the refreshing, beautiful sweetness of that cherry is incredible. The <clears> whole <throat> thing is an absolute delight wherever you stick your spoon. I am really, really, really impressed. This is a great dessert. The mousse, it's wonderful, it's soft and then that hidden treasure of the cherry compote inside, it hits the cursed gel, you know, really brings the, the gateau to life for me. I am going to find a fault. I have to, it's my job. Mm -hmm. And the only thing I want is more alcohol in this. It's a grown up, mature, brilliant dessert, and it needs a mature portion of liqueur. Yeah. It's great. I wasn't expecting it to be so good for them to say it was amazing like that. It was, yeah, awesome. That is an incredible, incredible achievement. Whatever happens, you need to be very proud of yourselves. You go off. We've got to try as best we can to judge this. What a day, though, I tell you. Been an emotional roller coaster. Oh, tough. tough, tough, tough. Quite an extraordinary day. Watching some extraordinary talent cooking incredible food. From the skills test, we had six very competent chefs who then came through and cooked just as strong in their signature round. The unfortunate side is there's no obvious people to send home. I think I can narrow the field a little bit. Out of the six, there was one chef that didn't have a good skills test, and that was Theodore. In the signature dish, his dish had problems on it. Yeah, for me, it was vibrant, but it wasn't a, my favourite looking dish of, of today. Mm. And the potatoes were raw. Out of all six chefs, he's probably our first candidate to leave the competition, and that's a close call. Yeah, and I think that's about as easy as the judging is going to get. I'd like to discuss Andrew. Absolutely stunning dessert. Everything on there for me was just amazing. Andrew was the star dish of the day, just by a whisker, but it was good. It was good. Zoe made us that carrot cake in a crescent shape. It was lovely. Zoe did very well in both rounds. An exciting young cook here. Very good. Andy, good skills test. Came in here, did the pork three ways. Monica and I, I, I felt, listening to it, liked it more than you did. I'm not 100% sure. It was a pretty picture plate, but it just lacked uh, a good body sauce to go with it. Wayne with his duck dish. There was a lot that I liked about the chef's signature dish today. This was a very good dish for this point of the competition. I wasn't a huge fan, though, of the quinoa. It was, like, really dry. I really like Kamal's approach, but I think for me, there's just one piece of fish too much on that plate. You really liked Kamal's dish. Monica and I had, had criticism of it. I just found some of the veg was under season, yet I thought that others were, were too salty. This is difficult. Who are we going to lose? Who is staying with us? Oh, I really, really want to continue in the competition, and especially after the feedback that I've just got, it makes you crave more. I feel like I've done enough, and I know that if I was to go further in the competition, then there's definitely a lot more to come. If I'm lucky enough to get through, I know I've got a lot more hard work in. If I haven't, then back to the day job and just carry on as normal. This is really difficult. We have to lose some of these chefs. <sighs> the 
chefs, I'd like to thank you for an exciting day of cookery today. We have had a really tough, tough debate. It's actually quite sad we have to lose some of you. Right, with regret, the first contestant leaving us is Theodore. Theodore, thank you. I'm disappointed in my performance. I think I could have done a lot better. But six very good chefs in there today. It was a privilege just to cook with them all. The second contestant leaving is Kamal. Sorry, mate, guys. Thank you. Good to have met you. Thank you. This is a bad day for me. I mean, I made mistakes I wouldn't normally make, so at the end of the day, I have to suck it up and take it. This decision, when we got down to this point, just got tougher and tougher. We had such a struggle. We did eventually make a decision. The decision we've made is that all four of you are staying with us. You're just too good. You are just too good. Chefs, congratulations. Can't wait to see you in the next round. Well done. Well done. Well done. Well done, guys. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Amazed to have gotten through. It's the first step in uh, what's hopefully going to be a long journey. But yeah, it's glad to have gotten over that hurdle. Uh, relieved. I know the hard work just going to start. So I will be practising from tomorrow. <laughs> Ecstatic, overwhelmed. It's hard to take in for the moment. Today has been an unforgettable experience. I'm just over the moon. Next time, it's the quarter final and the chefs must prove themselves to Marcus and Monica. I've really enjoyed this. I really have. Really need to get this dish finished. Only the best of them will get to cook for the critics. It's fantastic. It's original. They're very clever chef.